The Sunday Roundtable has assembled, and with us this morning, Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Rob Gray. So, Mayor Michelle Wu, she wants to impose a $7,500 fee for North End restaurants to open outdoor dining areas. Is this a fair idea or is it a bad idea, Marianne? I think it's fair because you look at all the things that come with opening those outdoor restaurants, crowded streets, crowded sidewalks, less parking, all of that. And now those funds will go to mitigate that. The North End's the tightest neighborhood in the city. It happens in every neighborhood that has outdoor dining, but that one in particular, it's really tough. And there's more garbage as well. 100%. As wrong. But uh, if you own a a restaurant on Newbury Street or Charles Street, Charles Street is tight too, and other places in the city, you don't have to pay. Why is that fair? I don't understand why she's picking on one neighborhood. And at the same time, state government's giving out $250 million to workers during the pandemic. We can't cover $300,000 for the costs of putting outdoor dining in the North End. They have workers too who need customers in their restaurants to get paid. Um, I'm hearing that um, there are more complaints from the North End residents than there is has been from any other area. Not sure if that was fit, you know, was put into the calculation. Uh, Mayor Wu also is making waves by telling the state she wants the job of fixing Boston schools, not state receivership. But the state is moving forward with possibly taking over the system. Is there a middle ground, do you think, Rob? I think it's going to be negotiated, if only because Charlie Baker only has eight months left. So even if he wants to do it, does he have the political capital to do it? Um, but I think the state's sending a signal to Michelle Wu, we can't wait for you to hire a superintendent to give us a plan for the schools. They're challenging her to come out with a school reform plan now. We'll see if she steps up to the plate. Is there a middle ground or do you think it's going to be one or the other, Marianne? Well, Rob's answer is proof that this is all about politics and nothing about public education. Charlie Baker sat there on the sidelines for six years while Marty Walsh churned through three superintendents and didn't say boo. Michelle Wu, in office, 131 days, wants to fix it, wants to fix the schools, been a parent in the Boston Public Schools for 10 years. Give her the opportunity to do it, especially when our democracy is under attack and right-wing groups are trying to take over school committees, take over, um, take books out of libraries and everything else. We need elected officials accountable to voters, not private entities taking over public school but, systems. That but the is numbers wrong. are the numbers in Boston schools underperform. Maybe they should have done it two, three years ago, but they underperform. Not why? Michelle Mu's fault, not right. her fault. But why not give her but the chance to fix the it? But what about the kids? Why not give her the chance to fix it? There are three months left in the school year. Come on. Well, uh, next question has to do with both Michelle Wu and Charlie Baker. It took three decades for the Green Line to reach Union Square in Somerville. But how long, but longtime residents, I should say, in the area worry they're going to be pushed out by new high-priced apartments and condos to lure commuters there. Is this simply the price of growth or should something be done about this, Rob? Well, full disclosure, I do have business interests in Union Square, and I can tell you by being familiar with it that it, the neighborhood is changing. But this happens any time that transit is added to a neighborhood. It happened in Cambridge with the red line. It happened in East Boston when the blue line was upgraded. So it's just par for the course. Is there anything you can do that could be done about this, Marianne? Well, it only took 37 years to extend the, the line. So, <laughs> I mean, true. you know, things change, right? <laughs> um, I think this speaks to the fact we need more rail across the strait, north, south, east, west, and more affordable housing policies. If you put those two things together, the state's economy will take off because people can live in more affordable places and commute to jobs by public transportation that pay more money. That's exactly the combination you want. Next question. There aren't very many Republicans in Massachusetts, but all the political drama seems to be focused on them early in this gubernatorial campaign year. Chris Doty is accusing Jeff Deal of trying to stuff illegitimate delegates into the party caucus process. Is this smoke or is this fire, Rob? I don't even think it's smoke. I mean, this, this is garden variety political caucusing before conventions. Chris Doughty, I think, embarrassed himself by coming out and calling it cheating and using his own mouth to do it instead of a campaign spokesman. I think it shows his inexperience as a candidate. You agree with Rob on this one? And pull the fire alarm. They weren't supposed to have a Western Mass 413 caucus for delegates. Come on. And it just speaks to the Trump supporters and Jeff Deal. They cheat. They, they're victims. Nothing goes right. They cheat. I mean, this is what we're going to get from now through this election is they're going to try to rig the rules, rig the game, and then scream they're victims.